There are odd tennis traditions that have remained over the years. What tennis star got in hot water over breaking the rules? There's a bird on the payroll? Which Grand Slam? Keep watching to find out. The Grand Slam tournaments, or majors, are the four most important annual tennis events. They offer the most ranking points, the most prize money, all of public and media attention, the greatest strength and size of the field. The Grand Slam itinerary opens at the start of the year with the Australian Open in mid-January. From late May to early June, we have the French Open, also known as Roland Garros and Wimbledon in June to July, before the final Open, the US Open in August to September. Each tournament is played over a two-week period. The Australian and United States tournaments are played on hard courts, the French on clay and Wimbledon on grass. The sport of tennis is defined by these four major championships, or the Grand Slams. Throughout its history, the greatest matches have been played on the sport's grandest stages. The the greatest champions in the sport have also amassed the most number of Grand Slam singles titles. Roger Federer, Rafael Nadal and Novak Djokovic in the men's category and Margaret Court, Serena Williams and Steffi Graf as all-time women's champions. While all other championships have moved on from the ways of old, Wimbledon still holds true to its customs and traditions. Wimbledon is the oldest and the most prestigious Grand Slam event and is laden with rich tradition, some of which have been lauded and others ridiculed. From the rules to the equipment or even the environment, things at Wimbledon have not changed a lot since its first tournament in 1877 and the event is known for those traditional touches as much as for tennis, for this is what makes Wimbledon a kind of a hallowed ground in the sport. What's the first weird tradition we discussed today? The age-old tradition of players wearing white clothing at tennis tournaments disappeared years ago at every event, except at, of course, Wimbledon. Wimbledon is the only Grand Slam event in which players are required to wear predominantly white attire and although this evolved with time in a certain way, it did not go in the direction that you would expect. In 1963, Wimbledon introduced a rule that required players to wear predominantly white, as it was stated, but that was replaced by a more restrictive rule in 1995 that directed players to be clothed, quote, almost entirely in white, according to an article on the Wimbledon website. Near the end of the 19th century, which is when the tournament came into existence, the affluent in the US and England had adopted the colour, white as a symbol of their leisure, and in 1890, Wimbledon mandated all white attire for participants. The dress code is so strict that clothing choices are submitted to the All England Lawn Tennis and Croquet Club for comment earlier in the year, and the referee determines whether attire is suitable on the day it's worn. So, what are the guidelines that Wimbledon insists on? According to the Wimbledon website article, it states that there should be no solid mass of colouring, little or no dark or bold colours, preference for pastel colours, no fluorescent colours, the back of shirts should be totally white, shorts and skirts should be totally white, and all other items of clothing, including hats, socks and shoes, to be almost entirely white. As you would expect, there have been breaches and clothes misses, but the last directive on the list of guidelines got Roger Federer into some trouble. What did Federer do? Federer wore sneakers with bright orange soles in a first round match in 2013. Wimbledon officials told him that he could not wear those shoes again because they violated the dress code. He did not don the colourful sneakers again, but the photos and media attention directed at the shoes were a boon for Nike. According to USA Today, less than two days later, that style of orange soled shoes was sold out on Nike's online store. Andre Agassi did something even weirder. He claimed he was unhappy with the all white dress code, so he boycotted Wimbledon for three years. He returned in 1991 with proper clothing and won the event in 1992. What else is unique to Wimbledon's tradition? The trophies. The trophies presented to the Wimbledon singles winners are almost as recognizable as the players who receive them, and the trophies have a lot more history. Since 1887, the men's winner has been presented a silver gilt cup that carries the inscription, the All England Lawn Tennis Club Single-Handed Champion of the World. Quite cheesy, right? Well, 
three of the past champions, Rafael Nadal, Novak Djokovic and Andy Murray, have hit two-handed backhands, so the title is a bit outdated, but isn't that the fate of trophies this old? A pineapple design adorns the top of the trophy, and nobody seems to know why. That's probably part of the tradition. The women's champion is presented with a silver Venus rosewater dish. The dish is decorated with mythological figures and is a copy of an electrotype from the Puta Temperantheon dish that resides in the Louvre in Paris. The men's and women's champions do not get to keep the trophies, but since 1949 they've received smaller replicas. Did you know that Wimbledon has a hawk on its payroll? Meet Rufus the Hawk. Rufus is a six-year-old Harris Hawk who has his own photo credential to gain access to the All England Club grounds and also has his own Twitter account and Facebook page. Rufus carries on a relatively new Wimbledon tradition started 15 years ago by Hamish, another Harris Hawk. What do these Hawks do? In 1999, Hamish was given the chore of scaring away pigeons, which seemed to enjoy the habitat provided by Centre Court. Not only did the pigeons interrupt play on occasion, but their droppings also tended to spoil the grass courts. So Hamish was hired through the avian control systems to rid the area of pigeons. Hamish was succeeded by Rufus, who works year-round at Wimbledon, but whose workload has increased during the tournament. He is set free at Centre Court at about 6am daily during the tournament, according to the Wimbledon website, and works for about 4 hours before play begins, chasing pigeons away. Rufus also works at dusk, assuming play has been completed for the day. He never catches the pigeons, but his intimidating presence is enough to keep most of the best away from the grounds. No snack is more closely associated with Wimbledon than strawberries and cream. It is to the All England Club what hot dogs are to American baseball stadiums. Legend has it that King George V introduced strawberries and cream to Wimbledon crowds, but the fact is that strawberries and tennis both represent the arrival of summer. Strawberries are only available during that time of year and became the fashionable thing to eat during summers in the 19th century. It just happened to coincide with Wimbledon. When you duplicate this Wimbledon tradition at home, help yourself to all you can eat. You might have noticed the slight difference between seedings and ATP rankings at Wimbledon. Why do you think that is? It's because Wimbledon is the only major tournament that does not go solely by ATP rankings when establishing seeding. Wimbledon also considers past results on grass and that has traditionally been part of its seeding policy. The formula does not apply to women, but the seeding committee still has the authority to alter seedings to create a competitive balance on the women's side, but no such changes have been made. Guess what? Wimbledon is the only Grand Slam event still played on grass even though that was the original surface of tennis and the major events. However, the difficulty in maintaining grass courts as well as the scarcity of grass venues have made grass court tennis a rare commodity. The grass at Wimbledon is 100% perennial rye grass and is cut to a height of 8mm, a little less than one third of an inch according to the Wimbledon website. It's the only court surface that changes significantly over the course of a tournament. Smooth, albeit slippery, at the start of the event, the courts become worn by the later rounds, creating more bad bounces. There is a general feeling that the grass courts at Wimbledon are slower now than they were several years ago. That gives baseliners a better chance to compete, although grass remains the fastest surface and one that benefits aggressive play that includes volleying. Perhaps because Wimbledon's grass courts are slower than they once were, the difference in performance on grass is less dramatic now. The fact that playing styles differ less among elite players than they once did could also be a component. The pure servant volley player is virtually extinct. Now, what's a British affair without royalty? British royalty has always been a conspicuous part of Wimbledon by its presence and participation. After all, the Queen is a patron of the All England Club, and her cousin, the Duke of Kent, is the club's presiding president. The British Royal Box, which seats 74 people, has been reserved for members of the British Royal Family and guests since 1922. For years, tradition required male players to bow and female players to curtsy to the Royal Box upon entering and leaving the court. However, in 2003, the Duke of Kent stopped that practice and now bows and curtsies are necessary only when the Queen is present. Thanks for watching this video. Which one of these traditions strikes you as really odd? Let us know in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. See you in the next one. Bye for now.